name is Ben Macri. I'm a software engineer here at PTC, working in the Kepware division. Um, I write software that works with automation and communication with different things. Okay, hi, I'm Cindy Braley, and I am a software engineer here. And um, we write software for the in, um, industrial automation industry. My name is Tim Johnston. I'm a software quality engineer. Uh, a big piece of my job is to write software that tests the software that we work on. Tell us a little about the role of programming in your work here. Well, programming is what I do every single day. I currently use C++ uh, is, the, is the programming language I develop in. The reason we use C++ is it's a very powerful, uh, powerful programming language and something that is very different about this industry versus others is we deal in milliseconds. So we need something that's going to um, work quickly and give us the level of control that we need to satisfy our customer requirements. Oh, but I'll, sometimes I'm not actually writing code. Sometimes I'm trying to spend time running code that has been written, stepping through it at that time in order to try to debug um, something that isn't working the way we expected, either here in our building or at a customer site. Um, so I program every day in a language called C Sharp, which is very similar to Java, which gives me some really good hooks into the software um, to be able to pretend to be a user. Um, my job is to ensure the quality of the product. So that basically means that if we add a new feature, it's my job to test it and make sure that it does what we say it's going to do. But also, in adding the new thing, I have to make sure that none of the old stuff broke. So basically, every time we add something, I have two choices. I can either sit down and go test every little thing um, to see if, if anything broke, like if I'm, or I could program um, and write an automated test that just does that in the background automatically without me thinking about it. And so could you tell our viewers a little bit about why customers come to you? Yeah, our customers come to us predominantly because they are looking to have um, their computer systems, their control systems, talk to machines that are on the factory floor. So one of the things that we're working on right now is we're talking to um, a toy making company and they want to be able to get information from their toy making machines. And so what we will do is make software that um, will extract that information from the machines and put it up in a control room where uh, people can see it and have control of the machine from a central location. So we're uh, talking to the machine with the, the language that the machine wants us to talk in. Um, we call that protocols or um, a driver. And we uh, then re uh, give the information to the control system so that uh, they can either store it in databases or um, quickly shut down the machine to fix things or provide maintenance to it. So tell me a little about your, pro your approach to working with customers. Well, here we use a, an agile system called Scrum, and we develop personas. So each type of person that we're building something for is called a persona, and we try to make sure that we're satisfying the needs of that persona. So I'm a quality engineer, so I'm thinking about the product that we make from the perspective of the persona of a man or woman on the factory floor that is setting up one of these systems and actually interacting with our software. So when I'm doing my testing, I'm trying to think about it from that perspective. Of what would they be using? What would they be touching? What would they, um, what would they be trying to change in our software? So how did you come to be doing the work you're doing here? Um, well, it's an interesting history. I, I am a software engineer right now, but I did not go to college for software engineering. Um, more than 30 years ago, I went to a liberal arts college and studied mathematics, which computers were not a big thing in the world at that time. And so I didn't do a lot of programming in college, but some. And then my first job was programming for equipment on a production floor in manufacturing that built and tested things that went in cars, car sensors and stuff. And I used a variety of languages, um, assembly, Fortran, Pascal, and um, finally C and C++. So I ended up going to college for engineering. And about halfway through, I was kind of thinking, geez, I, I don't think engineering is for me. I really want to work in TV or music or something like that. And I went to talk to the person um, that was at the, the head of the communication school, which taught television production. And I said, I think I really want to do this. And he said, no, you're in engineering. Like, you should do that. And I was kind of baffled. 
What I realized after I graduated was that programming and engineering is used everywhere in every industry. So I ended up working in television and music and a whole bunch of other places as a programmer. Um, and eventually uh, I landed here um, doing a strict software job. I find it a little bit more relaxed pace, um, a lot more enjoyable, a lot more creative, surprisingly more creative. Well, I can remember the day I figured out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, and that was programming. I was working in a computer lab at college, and I was helping a fellow student. We were both taking a basic programming class, and I was helping the student work through their project. And at the end, they said, you know, you should really get a job in this. You're really good. And I said, they pay you to do this? Yeah, you get good money for this. And I thought that was it. That's what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. And I've been doing that for 25 years now. What would be one piece of advice you would give to students who are interested in becoming programmers? To, to try things out, to tinker, to, you know, if you say you want to be, you want to build video games, well, build a video game. You think you can make a better app? Make an app. Try it. See what you can do. And they could go into any of their local, uh, any business, and talk to people and try to find someone who actually knows about the programming that's involved um, in that building. So the advice that I would give um, that I didn't take is that I would either get an internship or a co-op somewhere as soon as you can. Um, it gives you a gateway into potential future employers. It also gives you an opportunity kind of in a low-risk environment to um, see if you even like this kind of work. I feel like in some way programming is like the secret back door to everywhere, right? Programming is in every industry. It's in fashion, it's in TV, it's in movies, it's in toy making, it's in uh, farming, it's everywhere. So it's a really valuable skill to have. It's where most of the jobs are going to be in the future, I think. Um, and it's just a really powerful tool that sort of allows you to go 